Welcome back to New Movie Recap, and this is sci-fi thriller film titled Spectral, Republic of Moldova. An American soldier becomes separated from his team during the Transnistria War and enters a building alone. Equipped with hyperspectral imaging goggles, he sees a series of frozen bodies and encounters a translucent humanoid apparition. The soldier's goggles transmit everything he sees to his base, but before he can ask for information, the apparition goes through him and kills him. Mark, a scientist working for DARPA in the USA. He has developed a machine that can shatter materials with waves and is conducting a special demonstration for his superiors. However, they immediately ask him to start testing the machine on humans for potential use as a weapon. Although Mark is reluctant to use science for harm, his boss reminds him that they work for the government and must follow their protocols. Mark is ordered by the army to fly to Moldova to investigate the trouble they're having with the goggles he invented. After arriving at the American base, Mark meets General Orland and CIA officer Fran. Orland shows Mark a recording of the spectrum that the goggles captured before the soldier's death. Mark notices something on the screen just before the apparition appears, and Orland informs him that their security cameras have detected similar things several times in the last three weeks. Initially, they assumed it was interference, but their best soldier's death indicated that something else was going on. After conducting an autopsy, they found that the internal organs of the deceased were frozen while their skin was burned and corroded. In the last few weeks, they have discovered more bodies that have died in the same manner. However, their allied Moldovan military contact has no extra info of the situation. In the midst of a grim war, local teenagers have been spray-painting genocide Eriter at sites where people have been killed. The Eriter is believed to be a spirit of war, a local myth, but the CIA believes it could be a type of cloaking technology. However, the death of an American soldier has cast doubts on this theory. In order to investigate further, Mark proposes using his hyperspectral camera, a more powerful device that can see considerably deeper into the spectrum of light. After Orland approves the plan, Mark joins a team of Delta Force warriors to locate a missing team. During the installation of a camera on a military truck, the soldiers begin to boorish Mark for interfering with the construction of their weapons. Captain Cabrera, an old friend of Mark, reprimands the group and reminds them that Mark's team had created these trucks. Major Sessions, on the other hand, is not amused at the idea of bringing a civilian with them. After a while, team meets to discuss their upcoming mission, which involves entering a five-story apartment building. The previous team had disappeared in that building, and contact with them had been lost the previous day. The area is under insurgent control, and they need to be prepared for combat. Despite the possibility of encountering anomalies, their primary objective is to rescue any survivors and safely exit the area. Fran provides information on the anomalies stating that they are likely to be ordinary soldiers, wearing advanced electronic camouflage. Fran insists on participating in the mission, while Mark is assigned to seat in truck and to monitor the soldiers' helmet cam feeds. The team arrives at the building without any troubles and begins exploring the rooms. They find both soldiers and insurgents dead under similar mysterious circumstances. Soon they come across Sergeant Comstock, who is hiding under the tub. He informs that his entire team has been killed, and he has witnessed something supernatural. They move to the next floor where they encounter a specter that is impervious to gunfire. He walks through the man, instantly killing him. The rest of the team is also attacked by the specter and begins dying one by one. Mark suggests they retreat, but Fran refuses, stating they need more information. The soldiers begin using grenades to attack, and at this point Cabrera orders them to retreat. The survivors are facing a daunting challenge in their attempt to escape the specter. Despite their efforts to climb out of a window, the specter manages to follow them and continues to kill anyone in its path. Mark takes the opportunity to record the specter's appearance using a hyperspectral camera which reveals that it has a human-like shape and even a full human face. Cabrera tries to attack the specter, but his efforts are unsuccessful, and he too falls victim to this deadly power. Eventually, only a handful of soldiers are able to escape and make their way back to the truck. As the group drives away from the scene of the attack, they inadvertently enter a mined area causing the vehicle collapses on its side. Comstock, who had witnessed the specter and had been hiding under a tub for hours, hits his head and dies. Mark is attempting to recover the hyperspectral camera. The team decides to seek refuge in an abandoned factory and to try contact the base but the radios are not functioning properly. The group discusses the strange events they have witnessed, eventually acknowledging that they are dealing with something supernatural rather than technology. Mark describes the specter noting that it was human-like and seems to be conscious. Despite this, he is still uncertain about the entity's true nature. Due to the crash, all the soldiers' goggles have been destroyed, but Mark suggests using the hyperspectral camera to investigate the surroundings. The team discovers that several specters are attempting to reach them, but are unable to do so because the building is surrounded by a circle of iron filings 
feelings, which inflicts pain on them if they attempt to cross it. The team concludes that the circle is serving as a protective barrier, most likely put in place by someone living nearby. Suddenly they hear a noise from another room. The soldiers find out that the noise was made by siblings who don't speak English, but can communicate with Fran, who speaks their language. The soldiers also discover a transmission tower in the same room that sends out a powerful signal, which could be heard by anyone within a 20-mile radius, including the enemy. However, one of the soldiers insists that this is the only way for them to survive and contact the base. While the soldiers try to contact the base, Mark talks to the siblings with the help of Fran as an interpreter. One of the siblings, Sari, tells them that her father created a barrier around the building, and she thinks that the specters they have encountered are lost souls stuck between life and death, unable to find peace. Mark needs to know more, and asks Sari about her father's whereabouts. Sari agrees to show him and Fran the location, so she leaves her brother Bogdan with the soldiers. It turns out that Sari has not yet revealed to her brother that their father died while setting up the barrier, and she had to drag his body inside. Mark inspects the body and finds a necklace with a ceramic tile and a map of Masarov, a district where the specters first appeared. Sari doesn't know how her father knew about this place. Later, the soldiers receive a message from the base, confirming that they will be rescued by helicopters and tanks at an open plaza about half a mile away at dawn. However, the team is concerned that they won't have cover and debates whether it's a good idea to go. Mark comes up with a plan to make grenades with the iron fillings which will damage the specters. He also modifies a hyperspectral camera to create a searchlight that can reveal the specters on the streets. After that, soldiers send the instructions for this modification to the base so they could make a few searchlights and arrive safely for the location of evacuation. As they work on the plan, Sari finally tells her brother the truth about their father's death and gives him his necklace. Shortly after they hear noises outside and use the new searchlight to discover that the specters are trying to cross over the barrier by jumping on the power lines. The team prepares to leave but the specters follow them. Mark uses the searchlight to make the specters visible and the soldiers shoot at them with iron-filled underbarrel grenades. The shots really damage the specters, so soldiers shoot extra times to create an iron fog and follow Sari's directions to reach the open plaza. The team takes refuge inside an abandoned bus where Mark realizes that the searchlight is losing power. This makes them absolutely vulnerable. Suddenly they hear a noise, and fortunately it's the tanks that have come to save them, equipped with their own searchlights. The team quickly leaves the bus, but they are met with falling debris and are unable to communicate their findings to their rescuers in time. The newcomers engage in a fierce battle with the specters using regular weapons resulting in many casualties. Despite their efforts, the specters attack the tanks and destroy the searchlights. The team is forced to flee, but they cannot find Bogdan who is looking for his father's necklace that he accidentally dropped. Sari attempts to locate him, but a specter goes through Bogdan. Unfortunately, Mark confirms the boy's death. Meanwhile, the specters gather in the center of the area. The soldiers believe it's the end, but helicopters arrive just in time. Mark realizes that the wind from the helicopter's rotor is making it hard for the specters to move, so he grabs all the grenades he has and breaks them on the ground. As a result, the wind spreads iron fillings keeping the specters at bay. The team successfully escape, but the helicopters take them to a refugee bunker instead of the base that has been compromised. Meanwhile, chaos is spreading throughout the city. Upon arriving at the bunker, the team is met with guards who point their weapons at them. Fortunately, Fran is able to speak with them in their language and they are allowed to enter. The soldiers inspect the entire bunker to ensure its security while Mark and Fran take Sari to receive medical attention for her injured shoulder, which was caused by shrapnel during their escape. To ease her pain, Mark gives Sari her father's necklace which he had retrieved from Bogdan. He then asks her about her father's knowledge of the specters, but Sari only knows that he made ceramic containers for the Masarov power plant where the specters came from. Suddenly a loud clash is heard from outside, but it turns out to be Orland, who has arrived with other survivors from the base attack, bringing with them as much equipment as possible. Orland tells about the attack which was carried out by specters, and reveals that only 19 of the soldiers managed to survive. They were unable to request assistance due to their quick retreat, and now they have no choice except to fortify the bunker and wait. A conflict arises among the soldiers with some wanting to take action, while others believe it is not worth the risk. Mark suddenly interrupts the group. He connects all the facts together and explains the specters as a Bose-Einstein condensate, a state of matter that Nath Bose and Albert Einstein predicted. The specters can't touch ceramic and are hurt by iron, but they can go through walls. This explains why they couldn't reach Comstock who was hiding under a ceramic tub. The Masarov power plant is the source of the specters, and it's likely a weapon created by the enemy. 
Fortunately, Mark has an invention that can break them down using plasmic discharge. He proposes building as many of these weapons using the gear they brought from the base and electronics from the bunker. The soldiers start gathering all the useful details and Mark gets to work building the weapons. They also find a robot, called Mechanical Rottweiler, that they use to install a searchlight on it. Using information from Fran and a map of the city, they make a flight plan to the power plant by the safest route. Thanks to inspiring speech, Orland boosts team morale before heading to the power plant. The first group successfully tests Mark's new weapons and destroys the first wave of specters allowing the other two groups to join in. With all platforms blocked, the soldiers focus on fighting off incoming enemy, while the helicopter drops Mark together with Fran and two soldiers inside the plant. They split up to find the lab quickly, while the soldiers stay to fight. Upon entering the lab, they discover that all the scientists have been killed. Inside, they also find a weapon that allow to scan humans on a molecular level and replicates them in condensate form. Mark and Fran also notice several specters locked in cells, but half of them had escaped due to some accident, and the scientists couldn't stop them. Then they find a machine to run emergency shutdown procedure, but Fran need time to translate all instructions. Meanwhile, outside, the soldiers realize that the new specters that have arrived can regenerate, making it difficult to destroy them and causing even more casualties. Fran figures out that unlocking all the ports and pulling a bracket will kill all the specters. Mark climbs to the top of the machine to carry out the plan, and Fran covers for him by shooting at the specters coming out of the cells. At this point outside, a tornado of specters starts to form, pushing back the soldiers. Mark pulls off the cables and bracket, causing a shockwave that throws him down and also causes all the specters to dissolve into the air. Fran goes to check on Mark, and she finds him on a lower floor where they hear a noise coming from a hidden room. To their horror, they discover the brains and peripheral nervous systems of real humans inside capsules, revealing that the scientists were not only scanning people, but also using them to create and control the specters. Although the humans inside the capsules are not dead, and they are not fully alive either, Mark senses their pain. This prompts him to disconnect them and bring them a piece. Fran objects, urging him to think more broadly, but Mark has already made his final decision, after realizing the possible consequences. With the specters defeated, the American army sends a team to rescue the soldiers and relocate them to a new base. However, within a few days the soldiers are sent out again on a new mission. The government orders them to get the machines and capsules from the power plant in order to study and understand the new technology. Before leaving, Mark bids farewell to Orland and Fran, while Sari expresses her gratitude to him in English. At the end, the DARPA scientist boards a plane and returns to the United States. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.